hi and welcome in this video which is second in the series on healing and repair we will be discussing the healing of skin wound in our last episode we saw the general features and discussed the general process of healing i hope you have all watched it now that you are thorough with it we will move on to discuss the healing of skin wound healing of skin wound is a classic example of healing as a combination of regeneration and repair what is regeneration what is repair we discussed in our last video so healing of skin wound is a classic example of combination of regeneration and repair healing of skin wound is accomplished in one of the following two ways healing by first intention or primary union and healing by second intention or secondary union this depends upon certain conditions healing by first intention or primary union is when the wound is a clean surgical wound that is the wound is clean it is surgically incised there is very less tissue loss and the edges are approximated with the surgical suture on the other hand healing by secondary intention is when the wound is larger with a very large tissue defect sometimes even infected and the edges are not approximated with a suture that is the edges are gapping first let's see the events occurring in healing by primary intention as usual the first thing happening here is initial hemorrhage followed by clotting of blood which is then followed by acute inflammatory response what happens next is that the basal cells of the epidermis from both cut margins that is both cut ends start proliferating and migrate towards the incisional space these are called epithelial spurs these epithelial spurs or the migrated epidermal cells separate the underlying viable dermis from the overlying necrotic material and clot and this overlying necrotic material and clot now called scab is cast off so the cells from the basal layer of epidermis from the cut end proliferate and migrate towards the incisional space and this migration is in such a way that underlying viable dermis is separated from the overlying necrotic tissue and blood clot and this overlying necrotic tissue and blood clot is cast off as scab and what happens next is the fibroblasts appear in the scene and they start laying collagen fibers and this deposition of collagen fibers continues until collagen becomes proportionately higher in amount than cellular and vascular elements forming the scar remember this healing by first intention occurs in a sutured surgical wound as yes? and here each suture tract also heals the same way following the same events as we discussed now coming to the next type that is healing by secondary intention here the basic difference is healing takes place not just from margins inwards as we saw in the previous type 
okay the healing takes place not only from margins inwards but also from base upwards so the healing or proliferation takes place from both margins inwards and also from base upwards the sequence of events just like healing by primary intention includes the initial blood clot followed by acute inflammatory response the formation of epithelial spurs from the margins is also more or less similar except that it does not cover the surface fully until the granulation tissue from the base has started filling the wound space the rest is same this epithelial spur migrates in such a way that it separates the overlying necrotic material from underlying viable tissue and this necrotic material just like in primary intention is cast off as scab the major difference or the main bulk of the secondary healing is the formation of granulation tissue from base upwards the sequential events in the formation of granulation tissue we already discussed in our previous episode the angiogenesis and fibrogenesis initially angiogenesis occurs that is formation of new blood vessels that is neo vascularization followed by deposition of collagen fibers that is fibrogenesis this deposition of collagen fibers continues continually so that proportionately the amount of collagen fibers increase and there is proportionate reduction in this amount of uh, vascular and cellular elements and we also saw due to the action of myofibroblasts there is also contraction of wound and this contraction is very large to the extent of one third to one fourth of its original size the wound contracts to about one third to one fourth of its original size so this is secondary healing now coming to complications of wound healing the most common complication is infection the wound may get infected with bacteria and this infection usually delays the healing process there can also be implantation or epidermal cyst formation this occurs when there is persistence of epithelial cells in the wound after healing this persistent epithelial cells can sometimes give rise to epidermoid cysts another complication is incisional hernia commonly referred to as wound dehiscence this happens due to a weak scar a weak scar can lead to bursting open of the wound and this is called incisional hernia another common complication is keloid formation or hypertrophied scar at times the scar formation is very excessive ugly and painful due to excessive formation of collagen and this condition is referred to as keloid formation we saw usually the wound contracts to one third to one fourth its size and this contraction is normal but sometimes there can be excessive contraction leading to contractures example dupe trans or palmar contracture and sometimes rarely the scar may give rise to neoplasia or cancer also okay this ends our discussion on healing on skin wound our next discussion or next video will be on healing of fracture or fracture healing as usual you can download the notes in the description you can also mail me if you need any further guidance until we meet in our next episode very soon thanks for watching bye